Hello and welcome back to Corkwain. Um, I'm just heading off on what should be a, a three day trip from Loch Duich down through the Sound of Slate to Loch Nevis and Loch Huern. Uh, the idea is just to do a little exploring and a little fishing and to camp out for a couple of nights. I've never fished Nevis at all and only fished Loch Huern once from the shore. Um, Noidart is sandwiched in between them, so it's all pretty remote territory with very few people or, or roads in the area. It's the very end of March right now, so still pretty cold, but the, the forecast is for fairly settled weather and light winds. I reckon this trip will be around about 100, 100 miles altogether, so I can't afford for it to turn nasty a long way from launch. As for the video title, Loch Nevis means heaven in Gaelic, whilst Huron translates as hell. So hopefully reality will be a little different. So my plan is to head straight down to Loch Nevis and up to the head of the loch at Surleys before starting to work my way back. Um, it's roughly 40 miles to Surleys, so realistically about three hours, something like that. So we're just going to see if we can get into the bothy at Surleys here. The water's very, very shallow. So I'm not sure we'll get quite close enough. <laughs> Give it a try and see. This is the Bothy at Surleys, uh, right at the head of Loch Nevis. It is almost 40 years to the day since the last time I was here. It's a lot easier coming in by sea than hiking in across the mountains, that's for sure. style I think. Sleeping platform and a couple of wee bunk beds. It does the job on a cold and wet night. Not that I use them very often myself. So you can see where the boat's parked. It's just a, a huge big shallow sandy beach up here. Nice. So it's just a fairly random spot in moderately deep water. Uh, but, uh, I reckon we may as well give Nevis a wee shot since it's taking the trouble to get here. About 210 feet of water here, so we should be hopefully soft ground on the edge of the harder cliff as it comes down from the, the hill there. But uh, we'll see. Well, we've been fishing for about. 40-50 minutes just now. The rain's on quite heavily uh, and there ain't no fish. So I'll just keep ploughing away. Um, 
Time to make myself another coffee, I think. See if that changes our luck at all. Now, one of my least favourite jobs here. Just topping up fuel tanks. All the jiggle filter, this one. Once it gets going, it gets going. So we've probably done about, oh, I don't know, 40 odd miles. And that's something like four gallons of fuel gone. I've got another five gallon tank with me and a, a spare one as well. So, easily enough to get us back home. Surprise, surprise, not a sign of anything. Right, that's us. I'm going to move up towards Loch Huron now. Uh, find a spot to camp up there, I think. From here, it's about 20-25 miles to where I hope to camp on Loch Huron, so another hour or hour and a half to, to get there. I'm fairly sure I can get moored at my camping spot, but I won't know for sure until I see it. So I'm going to allow a little extra time to find a backup, just in case this one doesn't work out. I've got the stove in with me, but I don't know if I'll use it or not. Um, it's more for tomorrow night when it's forecast to get quite a bit colder. This fire circle's not mine. Um, I'm just going to make use of it. I'll let this die down a wee bit and then uh, get the dinner on. So tonight I've got Steak, baked potatoes, mushrooms, a couple of baked apples to back it up with, and uh, a beer for the tent, I think. Right, should take a few more minutes and not be us. Certainly keep me going tonight. 
which is a couple of apples as well. I'm going to have a sit down in the tent, I think. I'll say that's slightly overdone, but not too bad. It's, uh, uh, I think I'm just going to call it a night just now. Um, it's pretty dark outside, and as I say, I'm fairly tired. So that's going to eat up and uh, hit the sack, I think. So, say good night for now. We'll see you in the morning. There were a couple of otters just playing round by the boat there a minute back. Uh, I didn't have the camera with me, so I've missed them. Um, they saw me before I saw them, so they just edged away. And you, if I was them, I wouldn't be hanging around near me either. Well, there's just enough of a breeze this morning to make a fire a little inefficient, so uh, I'm just going to use the stove here as a, a firebox, so no chimney, just uh, looking like something to contain the fire, I don't know. This is kindling I took in with me, so you wouldn't get away with something quite as simple as this take your stuff off the beach. It'll get it going quickly enough. And the firebox obviously protects it nicely from the wind. It's simple this morning. Gonna head out in the water in a few minutes. I'll get something to eat first. And let's see if we can persuade this to boil in the remnants. Maybe, maybe not. Looks like I'm going to get some ashy coffee, I think. As I said, probably about half a dozen times already, I'm in Loch Huron today. Um, I was down at Nevis yesterday, um, but only did a couple of hours fishing and uh, couldn't find anywhere that I was comfortable leaving the boat overnight. So, um, headed back up to Huorn, where I was planning on spending the night here anyway. So today I'm going to head a couple of miles up the loch, um, have a few hours fishing up there, but, and the targets really are anything that's down there. Um, probably spur dog would be the main target, um, maybe rays or skate as well. Um, I've never fished Huorn from a boat before. Uh, and I've only once spent a few hours fishing from the shore uh, where I caught a big fat zero except for a giant big brown crab. So it shouldn't be too difficult to improve on that. Um, Well, um, 
up the loch a wee bit just now. Not a long way up towards the head of the loch, just a couple of miles. Um, so I'm going to put down a slightly larger bait just to see if there's bigger spar dogs or you know, they'll also pick up skate if there's any around. And the gear's sized enough to handle it. But uh, Give it a whirl here for an hour or two and see how we get on. So, the bit we're in at the moment, it's about 150 feet of water, and it's about the deepest bit of this particular section of log, surrounded, well, on three sides by rock, really. Not much tide through it, but hopefully it's small enough that the fish concentrate a little bit in here. And with having soft seabed and rock round around, round about, hopefully there's a chance of conger as well as bottom fish. But that's the theory. I suspect the reality might be a little different. So it's a nicer day today than was forecast. I was expecting it rain but, and a bit of wind, but it's actually quite nice just now. And we're just getting a bite. So let's put the coffee down. Go and see what we got, if anything. Go. That's a bit more like it. Reasonably enough. Uh, I think probably a bit below double figures, but 104 centimeters or something. So I'll just pop it back. Well, that's the first decent fish, first fish of the trip. I'll see if there's any more down there. Uh, and since we're exploring a bit, if I find there's a lot, I'll probably move anyway. Try somewhere else. Just to see what's around. This is a spot, the only spot I tried from the shore the last time I was here. It is miles from anywhere, like... Uh, but I was just getting snagged completely every time. There's a spar dog nibbling away on this. Play a little bit big for it, but. Overkill this rod for a wee, wee ish spar dog. Smaller one, this. I don't know how it managed to get that bait.
So that last fish was smaller, it was only about six, seven pounds probably. Uh, so we'll see. Okay, so not not a huge one, but not bad by sea log standards. Quite quite pretty, they're not as dark and muddy looking as some of the ones you get. First ray I've had for a while, actually. Oh, that's the other rod going, so this guy better go back now. Right, I think that brings us up to 10 spurries and that ray, so I'm just going to move, going to move up the lock to actually a less likely spot. I just want to give it a wee try and see. So I've given it a try here for a couple of hours, uh, absolutely nothing, not a sign of anything down there. So it's going to call a halt here and uh, head down the lock a bit. Um, this is always a bit of a long shot because we're quite, quite a long way up the lock here. So I'll just reverse course and go back down into the sort of main lock and give it a try there for another few hours.
I'm not quite telling the truth. Did get something. So, uh, I think that basically says there's not much else down there feeding. Well, we're not a million miles away from where I'm camping. Um, it's a bit breezier in this bit of the loch. So I've come in shore a little bit just to get a wee bit of shelter. Uh, it's not particularly bouncy out there, but it's very, very cold in the in the wind. So we're in about 190 feet of water here. Um, so just try it again, raise spur dogs, see what we get. A couple of hours here and then probably head in. Get a coffee. some life. And it's a spur dog life too. Thought they'd seen that. Oh, that Not a big one. one. So, let's see if there's any more down there. That was just a smallish one about five pound maybe. Brilliant, what a tangle. Right. Right, what a mess. Uh. Okay. Well, that's my other line. Ah. Uh. This will take a while. So I just ended up cutting a line at the end. It's just too much danger by getting around the prop. Just a big raft of it. Well, that's us back ashore again. So, uh, just about to get the fire lit, get some dinner on. Uh, it's around half seven just now, so the light will be going in a wee while. Not immediately. Let's get something on while I can still see what I'm cooking.
Um, I'm getting ambitious tonight as I'm treating myself to an Indian. At least it's sort of vaguely styled along the lines of a, a chicken mm. korma. And with a little it's luck it's actually edible. Although being too dark to see it properly will probably make it feel, appear better than it actually is. Being too hungry to care also helps. Well, I'm glad it's morning. Uh, it was pretty windy last night. Um, for about two or three hours in the middle of the night, uh, the wind really got going. Um, so, not only was the tent shaking, I was having to get out and just check the boat was it still okay and it's mooring. So, it's just a reminder of how changeable it can be around here. But it's absolutely flat, calm, and beautiful just now. Since I forgot them last time, I went slightly overkill with the pen pegs this time. I wouldn't have got away with it quite as easily here. I'm heading up in a rough direction of Glen Elg for a few hours fishing this morning. But I have to say this bit of coast along the north side of Hoorn is extremely pretty. Perhaps a bit exposed for an overnight mooring but attractive from a shore fishing point of view. And I do like a bit of woodland when I'm fishing as it makes a fine change from just bare rock and heather which is what you get used to. Hey. Coffee on, and then some bacon and egg, I think. That will do. This is just sitting out in the sound of slate. Um, the mark I fished a few times for spar dog and skate. Um, and there's been quite a few here on previous occasions. Uh, some quite large ones too. Um, so this is the only mark I've fished before that I've been trying this weekend. So I say give it two or three hours here, and then uh, head back up past Glen Elg. But uh, a fine morning just now. Calm and quite sunny. So, not complaining, certainly not after last night. It was quite the reverse, windy and wet. Well, it's going to stick a bigger weight on. 
an eight might hold the bottom here, but uh, either a 12 or a 16, I'm not quite sure which, but it'll do the trick anyway. That was a good bite, so I don't know how I managed to miss it. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything left of this bait. Something had to go a couple of times and I missed them both. Not much left. Right, we're going to head up to the Beyond Kyle Ray now, so going to try and giving either the Port Napier wreck a go or possibly um, under the Bridget Kyle, so either way. Gonna pop a, a wee spinning bait on. Well, a wee soft bait, I should say. But So the Port Napier is a, a mine layer. She sank here with, uh, or she caught fire, loaded with a cargo of mines. So there's several hundred mines and torpedoes aboard her. Um, part of her blew up when she was towed in here. And then most of the rest of the damage you see is just salvage over the years. We removed the vast majority of the mines and torpedoes and apparently there's a few still unaccounted for. So she's just lying on our on our side here. But she's quite a big boat. So the water's 50 feet here. So this is some of the superstructure of the Port Napier. I'm guessing it was salvaged rather than it uh, blown here by the explosion.
a very big fish this I don't think There we go, nice little pollock. So, uh, three pound ish maybe, at best. It's got a few pollock on it. Although these ones aren't very big. And that's a wee one, all right. Than the superstructure there. Just got to be careful around here, I don't want to become part of a wreck myself. Very good. As of the fishing are wrecky. This is the sort of crap I'm picking up with the lures. Some sort of sea squirt with a load of uh, brittle stars alongside it, I think. Anyway, can. Just go back down to the to the bottom, I think. Oh, that's a bit better. Mm, this one's not happy.
Just a wee bit pollock. Right, these are my last few casts. Uh, I'm just going to head back into Dorney in a few minutes. Uh, I said, get an early finish, get home at a reasonable time tonight, I think. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time. And if you enjoyed it, please uh, do hit the a like, subscribe, all the rest of it, type buttons. It does keep YouTube happy.